Well, hello everyone. This is Steve Tate, making my first uh, YouTube video here, um, focused on action PC baseball. Uh, I've had several uh, others that I've seen online on YouTube posting things about their sims and everything, and decided to get involved in this myself. Big thanks to Beatles Eternally, who uh, I stumbled across his uh, great channel, and he's doing a dead ball league right started watching some of that he found out about um, a project i've been working on which is a five-year franchise run uh, in creating some homebrewed teams uh, based on those five-year uh, runs um, also al red sox fan great channel as well um, started watching them al's running a tournament with my uh, five-year file that i have here and i decided hey i'm gonna fire this thing up and I get a lot of questions. Um, I went on live with Beatles Eternally and had a little question and answer session. Uh, he and I talked a little bit, um, but I get messaged and people on the uh, Action PC forum and a lot of that start asking me about this project and where it came from and had no idea that there would be other people besides myself that would be interested in a five-year slice. And how this started was several years ago on the Action Forum, some others that have been uh, involved in similar projects, uh, Hockey Dad and, and Zep out there that have done similar projects themselves and collaborated uh, uh, with me on, on some past projects is I approached a decade file where I took, you know, a 1970s and took the Yankees, for example, and to qualify a player had to play three straight years for him. And I would average those three years, create the data, put it into Action PC and make a homebrew file. A lot of collaboration on that as I ended up expanding the years a little um, and people shared some information that helped me tweak that approach. That's probably about eight to 10 years ago, if not more, um, I did work on that. But this one, let's say probably around three years ago or so, I really started focusing on, okay, what's new? And the fun thing about Action PC, if anybody's a current owner or thinking about it, is the full customizing that you can do. I mean, you can create your own teams, your own players, your own seasons. It's so editable um, and great for home brewing. And that's one thing that I really love. I think I own probably 90% of all the seasons they sell. And I have done some season replays. But I have a blast looking at what if. What if we took something that doesn't exist, right? What would a five-year run look like? And I got to thinking about it, and I just pulled up an Excel spreadsheet one day, and I think I've even got my spreadsheet open here, and just started. You can see how I approach some of this stuff. Cranked open this Excel spreadsheet and just started um, throwing in the information, picking the years I would use. You know, I'm going to have to find the fielding stats, looking at ratings and different things like that. And what would it look like? Who would be on these teams, right? And how would I qualify a player? So what I did is I decided to take a two-year approach. So I look at a five-year run. You can see here, if we look at the rosters, I've got the, my American League file up. And here's an example, the Yankees, 1927 to 31. I take that five-year run. For a player to qualify, they need to have two years. A full year and a partial is fine, right? But as long as they played more than one year, I'll average those and then use that stat line, or you could refer to it as build a card for them in Action PC. Um, and the creation of this is a blast for me. I, I enjoy doing it. It's kind of this what if. Um, it's not your normal approach to like, um, like a franchise file where you just grab like a player's best year, right? I think we all know those. And I didn't want to do that because a lot of times, you know, a player may have one year that really stood out, like a Norm Cash in 61 is an example I always come to. So I thought, hey, let me start crunching the numbers and see if I'd have, have enough players for a team, what it would look like. And it's just grown and grown and grown to, I think as of tonight, I just finished this team right here, the 23 to 27 Tigers. And I think I'm about 78 or 79 in each, the AL and NL. So what I had to do with 2022 is Dave has, uh, and uh, Action PC has expanded uh, the amount of teams you can have on one file 
with what used to be, I think, 80. Now you can have 120, right? Um, so I've got them separated. I've got an AL file and an NL file. So I just thought, hey, I'd walk through some of the rationale behind why I chose this project, highlight some of the teams, and then maybe also give a little walkthrough because not only have I had interest from people in this project, which I never thought there would be a lot, uh, that's been surprising, but also people asking me questions about the game itself and certain things. And I thought um, a few things I've learned, and I think I've been an owner of Action PC since about 2004, at least, if not earlier than that. And each version that comes out yearly, they add new features. It's such an in-depth game. And sometimes I fire it up and play it like I always do. And I, I don't pay attention to look at all the different things they have. But just recently, you can see here on this screen, um, I've added the logo uh, manager. I don't have it the ballpark assigned yet, uh, the proper photo for what would be Navin Field here in 1925. But you got the manager photos. You can put uniforms here, um, the team logo. So I've been trying to, what I call, window dress it up a little bit, right? Put some of these little uh, photo enhancements. And uh, at the same time, I may highlight here a little bit some of the cards I've been doing when I get a chance. So this is a file. Just finished this. 23 to 27 tiger team and if i go up here to modify team you can kind of see what i've built here there what i've chosen to do is take the middle year in that five-year run and just go ahead and assign that as their base year and park and the players themselves i have just chosen to take the year I'll just pull up a card here so you can see it the year that they had the most at-bats for a batter or the year they had the most innings pitch for a pitcher because I'm taking two years. So you can see here that Johnny Bassler is assigned to um, 1923 Navin Field. And if I go over here and I find my Tigers somewhere, I've got stuff all over. See what years I chose to use for Bassler. Not the most organized set I have. I have multiple spreadsheets with ratings and different things on here. But you can see right here for Bassler, I've got 1923 uh, and 1924. So those are the two seasons I'm using. 23, he had the most at bat, so I sign him. And that's kind of the rationale or approach I use since there's no real one season they come from. And the game requires that you have them. Game needs to know, hey, what the universe is this player coming from, right? Uh, some people may not be aware of this, but what is convenient when you're looking at the player card is I can click right on that box that says Naven Field, and from here I could change the year of the park they're assigned to. I could change the park itself right here. Kind of a nice way to be able to easily navigate that. Uh, but you can see the card here. It shows the lefty-righty breakdown for the player. Over here, it's got the arm rating and the pass ball rating for it. You can see the fielding stats, which is something I also do. So it takes a lot of time to build these because what I'll do is I'm also putting in the fielding stats. So I'm having to average the two years, which is fairly easy when it comes to the main stats like batting. Um, some people may not be aware of this, but I may mean, live on retro sheet, fan graphs, and baseball references, just to name a few. But if you're ever in baseball reference, type in somebody here. I had Ty Cobb's picture up, so let me type in Ty Cobb here. You click on a player that you're looking at. And let's say I'm doing my two-year slice, and I want, I want to use 23 and 24 for Ty Cobb. I would click this area right here. I always click right where the age is, and then the other one. Click on those two, and automatically I get a two-year average. It makes it really fast for me when I'm doing that. Then I can type in the information I need. Uh, that Then I will be able to go in and type into the game. Very easy. Same thing. You can just click on them to get rid of them. Or, you know, say I'm doing a three-year run. And I'm taking 1915 to 17. I just come down here, select all three. Now I'm getting an average here of all three. So... If anybody here goes to baseball reference, like many of us that are involved in simming uh, may do, this is a great thing when you're doing homebrew projects real quick. Also works 
for pitchers. So let's hit Nolan Ryan here. Same thing. I want to take Nolan Ryan. I'm going to take these two years. I get my average line. So it makes it great when I'm compiling all of my data to then go and input into the game itself. So I have not gotten, uh, it'll also work for pitching or batters, uh, batting for pitchers, I should say. Um, the one thing it won't work on is fielding. So, you know, sometimes I'll have to look at that and just do my own math um, while I'm getting that figured out. But just a little tip I thought I would share. I've had some people talk about um, the effort that's put into this. And it is a, uh, it's a labor of love, I would say, because it takes me a long time to, I'd say if I sit down and start cranking out numbers, get all the data I need, and then research all the, the fielding ratings, and, and which can be a little time consuming because there's multiple sources for that to come up with the fielding ratings. Um, it can take probably four or five hours um, to get a team done. In other words, to get all the data crunched, the ratings, get it all checked out, then to create the team, get them in the, um, on that team, and then to go in and start editing uh, the player. So it's pretty time consuming, but again, I, I love crunching the numbers. It's like a trip down memory lane with some of the history and that good stuff. So this is what uh, I've been working on. As you can see, I've got the AL file up here now. We've got quite a few teams. The new 2022 game allows this six slot that sits right here. So typically you would see two divisions that you could have. A lot of times it'll one will be AL, one will be NL. And they used to only have five slots um, of eight for each division for a total of 80. Now you can get 12 total slots, six in each division with 10 for a total of 120. So one thing to be aware of, if you download this file I have, I've got it in the 2022 format. So if you're not running 2022 and you're running 2021 or earlier, when you bring this in, then the rosters are going to look weird. Uh, some people have reported that they're a little screwy or they're not matching up. I would just suggest um, taking this and um, once you get this, go ahead and opening up a blank league if you've got an older than 2022 version and then just import a team, which is, is if you never imported a team, when you set up your blank league, like let me do that. Some people have asked about that as well. But you can go to utilities here, create a blank league. Give it a name, call it Blank Test League. Create the folder, and you can see right down here now that I'm in that Blank Test League. There's no teams here at all. And then if you want teams in here, you can go right up here um, to organize. You can look at, go to rosters this way, or you can click it right here in the hot button up there. And then when you go under teams, you can say import teams. Then you can go through all of the five tons of files. Trust me, you can see how many backups I've got of different things. But let's say I want to import a, a team from 1924. I'll go over here, pick uh, Detroit in 24, uh, maybe Pittsburgh in 24. And once I get all the ones I selected, or I could select all. Grab Detroit and Pittsburgh, import teams. Boom. Now, once you get them here, you can see they automatically go to the first division up here, but you can grab them, press down on your left mouse, and I could drag this right here and drop it. Or I could move this one over here. Wherever you get them, wherever you want, exit out, and now you can see I've got Pittsburgh and Detroit right there. Nice thing, if I wanted to move them over to the same one, I could always go under here under Move Teams. I could grab Pittsburgh right here, drag it right up underneath Detroit, hit Exit, and now it's right over there. So if you've never imported teams from different uh, rosters, it's easy to do. And if you've got a prior to 2022 version, I'd suggest, hey, create a blank league and then go to uh, and open up that um, 2022 format that my five-year file's in and just drag them in. And you should have no problem seeing them that way.
So let me go back over. I've got my NL league over here with my teams. And so what I've done is just kind of break down since I've got a total of uh, 12 divisions, just kind of broken out the era that it came from. So you can see, uh, and there's no rhyme or reason to how many. I started off this project trying to get teams that were well known, right? Like the, the the 27 Yankees, or you know, here's the 42 to 46 Cardinals, or you know, the Dodgers 62 to 66. Some well known runs where teams really were, you know, had some World Series wins in there. Once I built all those well-known teams, then it started becoming like, okay, what other ones can I build? My goal has been to always have these teams be over 500. Um, I held that rule pretty steady until this team right here. I decided, you know what, this Atlanta team, take a look at, you can see their 80 and 82 is their wins losses, right? So they're just a hair under 500. But I thought, how interesting would it be to have a team with these kind of players on it. You know, you've got a hot Rico Cardi, Daryl Evans, Dusty Baker, Cepeda, Ralph Gars there, Hank Aaron. You got Phil Naikro on the pitching staff, right? Um, so this is the first one I've done where they didn't at least have a 500 um, average. Um, I'm also contemplating, since I've built all the logical teams that you would want on this for the great five-year runs, maybe there's some other ones that aren't 500, but they're interesting, right? Um, a Ralph Kiner uh, pirate team, um, a 20s and 30s Phillies uh, team when they had a horrible pitching staff, but you got lefty O'Doul and Chuck Klein batting, um, things like that. So, um, you know, the way I look at it is I can put 120 on one of these files for the NL. I think I'm getting close to 80. I might have 80 on this file right here or 79. Um, but hey, maybe there's some other ones as people give me feedback that we can build and to put on, on this that. Um, the idea being people can use these for fun projects. Again, uh, Al Red Sox fan, if you haven't looked at his site on YouTube, I would suggest going over there. He's running a tournament right now um, with a file. Uh, about two weeks ago, I had a file that I published. I've added some new teams since, but he's testing it out and running uh, a tournament over there. Um, I know uh, I've spent some time with Beatles Eternally. He, Beatles Eternally is running a Ned McGreevy dead ball league, which is great to tune in and watch if you ever get a chance uh, because what they've done is drafted players uh, up to 1919 uh, 19, and uh, they're running like a draft league all dead ball so it's kind of cool to see a dead ball project but Beatles uh, eternally has also looked at my file and uh, enjoyed it and uh, said he's been doing a lot of playing offline with it so yeah I just thought I would uh, kick off my uh, prism live and Put a video together um, and my goal is to maybe highlight some future projects with this file also some other sim things i'm interested in because i have a file just like this for basketball football and just scratch the surface getting one going um, for hockey all with action uh, pc games so um, the five-year file has kind of consumed my brain and my thoughts and uh, just have had a blast doing it and it opens up a lot of possibilities to me to have run little leagues, different projects, um, tournaments, things like that. So um, interested for people that are using it, uh, you know, kind of finding out how they're uh, having fun with it. Or it's just an exhibition game. So all good stuff. Um, you can see that, again, I was talking about some of the teams. Some of the teams I've actually built pictures for. And I got tired. Let me pull up. Uh, to what we got here, Cincinnati, 72, 76. So you can see for a lot of them, I'm trying to make sure I get a good ballpark assigned and uh, a good photo I want to use, getting the manager photo, taking advantage of the uh, uniforms. And if anybody uh, out there wonders how you do this, when you create your team and you go to modified team, you click on logo and I've got tons of logos here, right? So I can select the logo I want. Um, I've got manager files that are just in the player photo um, file, and I just put a little MGR next to them. So when I'm scrolling down, if they used to be a player, I know which ones to pull on there. I've downloaded from the Action uh, Community site some uniforms. So I can go in here and search for all kinds of teams, different eras and uh, years 
uh, uniforms and select the right ones. Dresses it up nice. The photos I chose to use, I had many photo packs that I've used that you might see some on the action uh, forum that are shared on PC ballparks, tons of sources over the last 15 plus years where I've obtained photos. But I really got into the idea of maybe having something more than just a face shot or a headshot for photos. So another person deserves a lot of credit um, is uh, Mark Weiss, uh, Sim Mark, on the action forums who years ago um, kind of helped me out because he used to do a lot of work making custom baseball card photo files for a lot of his King of Diamond projects. So he got me into that, and I use uh, Snagit. And another guy, Craveheart, uh, kudos to him. He created um, a set of cards that look like the 61 set, and that's the ones I'm using right here. So if we click on a player here, here's Gary Nolan. You'll see it very similar to 1961 tops kind of set up with the color and name. And then I've just added a logo to it because um, I kind of liked throwing some team colors and logos around on it. So I've got tons of uh, pictures, which is also time consuming, but fun, right? So it's, sometimes I'll take a break from the data entry and playing and I'll start working on photo packs. I, I've probably only got maybe 30% of all the teams have their photos taken care of as I've added this, maybe a little bit more, but somewhere in, the, in 30%, a lot of these teams have photos. My photos um, be just like this. I'll have a file for each of my five-year runs, and I can pull one up and kind of show you what I'm doing. Here are the, uh, no, let's pick, here's the 68 to 72 Tigers. And you get an idea. What, what I'm doing is trying to create several options. So if you look here, I've got, you know, Al Kaline right here, but I've got what, about six different options photos that I want to use in the game, maybe seven, maybe eight options for him, right? Here's a Ray Leo Rodriguez. I've got a few. So the goal is to get as many um, as I can find, at least three or four, so that there's some options. And I tend to like something that's a little bit more action, shows the full uniform and things like that, more similar to a baseball card than just a face shot, if I can find them, right? So it can take a while to put these all together. Here's Denny McLean. A couple of photos for him. And to me, they just dress up, look really good in, um, in the game. Here, I've tried to take the same logo I'm using for that team to put on here. You can see that's a Tiger logo right there um, during that time frame. Um, I've also got a Tiger team, an early team that I've actually got some photos for right here, 34 to 38 Tigers. And you can see um, different logo. I'm using that era logo and playing around a little bit with uh, adding some color to pictures and different things right here. Got Mickey Cochran's manager photo for that team. Then got some player photos because he played on that team as well. Um, so I've got quite a few done, but I've added so many in the last couple of months, I just couldn't keep up. So at some point, my goal is to go back and have matching card sets to go with this five-year file. So we'll see how that goes, right? Here's the 54 to 58. Cincinnati Reds, a lot of bats, a lot of good bats here on this uh, on this file. Um, but I'll fire up a game here so you can kind of see the layout. Ballparks, let me run through ballparks. I've had that question as well, too. So under ballparks up here at the top, you got two things to worry about, right? Your park data. And that's where you go in here and pick your park. Grab Ebbets Field here. And Ebbets Field, this, once you grab the park, it kind of shows you all your park factors here, the years it was in use. That's the one I'm, I'm, I've am i got the 50s uh, Dodgers assigned to, but, you know, I've got all of my uh, ballparks here I can scroll through and select which ones I want to use. You can see I'm using this one of Ebbets Field up here. I've got an alternate one um, that I'm using for night. I, don't, I haven't really selected a night one. And then I've got a third alternate down here. So when I'm playing, I can easily go into the game and flip between these. If I decide, hey, I want to play off on a different park, and when I go into the game, I can kind of show how that, how that happens. The other piece on ballparks is this. 
and it can be a little time consuming, park layouts. So what I'll do is I'll stretch this out similar to what my screen would look like uh, on a three quarter shot here. And let's take a look at Ebbets that we were talking about. I've got many Ebbets fields. Some of them I've got, uh, I haven't got the marker set. Here's some other ones. Here's one I am using. And you can see here I've got all the markers set where you can drag these around. And if you've never done this, it's a blast. It can be a little tedious once you get them set up, but the game is so much fun. Uh, I love the video chalk, chalkboard. Use it a ton. But you can drag and drop these where you need to be for the bottom and top of the different fence markers, where the batters and runners are, the on deck, foul balls where they would go right here, the grandstand markers, things like that. So let's test this out. And I'm running this on my main screen, which happens to be, uh, I'm, I think I'm 3440 by 1440. It's a 34 inch wide. Um, so I am interested to see how this video comes out because this is what I play on. But we run an exhibition game here. Grab it 51 to 55 Brooklyn team. And let's maybe something similar in that era. How about a. 61 to 65 reds. Got Ebbets Field. Pick a warm month. Day game and let's play. I'm going to set the computer to control Cincinnati. I'll take Brooklyn. Um, if you've never, if you're not that familiar with action, or sometimes even if you are, and I run across this yearly because I again I play every year, but sometimes you know I don't bother to really dig down into all the features. It's a feature-heavy game, and that's one of the reasons I really love it. Tons of features, tons of stat tracking, tons of flexibility, and the biggest for me is it allows me to do homebrews and input and do my own editing, which I think is wonderful. Um, you can select three-quarter screen or full screen. I'll flip back and forth so we can see the difference. You can set up where your play call boxes are. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about what these mean when you see it on the screen. Uh, player displays, right? What do you want to show? I've got last name, the fielding range, and their throwing arm. You could have the position, a uniform number. You can pick how size, if they, if they want rectangle, oval. I've got the players on extra small, and we can always adjust that either here, or I'll show you how to adjust that on your park layout. If you want to bump them up or down when you're playing the game. I've got the photos even for the fielders and the batters with the player labels. And then I'm also using it for batter, pitcher, runners, video and sound. So maybe I'll slow the video speed a little bit. I tend to play on fast video, but let me pop it down a little bit for this. Um, I'm not using the narrator since I'm talking here. Um, sometimes I will. That's fun. Uh, but tons of different things you can select here. Play-by-play, uh, play, right? I like the bias for the home team. Throw a little flavor in there, so I do that. Um, park image, it's showing me that um, right here, I've got my three Ebbets fields, right? So I can choose the one I have for day, the one I have for night, or I can go with the alternate. So if I'm playing the game and I decide halfway through, you know what, let me play the rest of the game with this other park image up. You can come in at any time, open this up, and go in here. Um, and switch the park image. Box and reports. You know, what do you want to track in your batting line? Look at all tons of stuff here, right? Um, miscellaneous. This is where you can set the game era. So, do you want to play this game in a standard batter pitcher average? So, for me, I'm playing the 61 to 65 Reds against the 51 to 55 Dodgers. So, if I've got a red batter in 1952, Coming to the plate and the pitchers uh, from 1953 NL, it's going to look at those two and kind of combine those two eras to create its own average baseline. Um, or you could just pick overall cross era average and that everybody's playing to that. Or you could pick a specific year and say, hey, all these players are coming from the universe they were created in, but I want to play this game like it was 19, you know, 77 baseball or you know, 2021 baseball, whatever. 
choice is unlimited, right? You can choose that yourself. I'm going to leave it on the standard batter pitcher average for this. It's telling you today's weather. You don't like it, you can get in here and manipulate it a little bit, right? And this is all based off the park, the ballpark information that's put in as far as its climate and all that good stuff. Um, so just a little rundown for those of you that may not be familiar with some of the options that we have here. So I'm going to hit play. I'm going to bring up our roster screen here. I'm the Dodgers, so sometimes I'll just I'll ask the computer what it suggests, and then I'll look at it and see if I want to make changes. So I'm playing with the DH because to me with these big files where you've got great batters, I don't want to see pitchers bat. Although if they were from American League prior to 1973 or all of NL, all of these files I've created have the actual pitcher batting and splits. Um, even though I don't plan to use them in any of my projects, I made sure they were all there. It takes a little bit extra time, but they are accurate. So, oh, we got Jackie Robinson riding the bench. Not going to happen. So if you want to input somebody, you just click over here. Gil, um, I just go over here and click Jackie Robinson and then double click here. It brings him in. We'll put him at second base. Um, another way, if you're looking at, I'm going against uh, Perky here, who's a right-handed pitcher. You can go over here to bat left and right. And I'm going against a righty. And let me look at on-base percentage and slugging percentage versus righties. And you can see the people that are strong against righties here. Um, Sandy Amaros. Maybe I'll... No, i got George Shube is pretty good. Um, let's see, who do I want in left field? I can search up here on who's rated. We can click on... All the positions to see all the people rated at that. If I'm looking at left fielders here, I've got Sandy Amaros. And I think that's who's going in to play left field. We've got Bobby Cox, Shuba, Campanel. I think I'll go with that. Looks good. We can view our opponent. Let him pick a computer uh, lineup. And away we go. So hopefully, I'm just bringing the dex desktop audio down a little bit so I don't have to talk over it too much. But we go into play ball. You can see here, I really like how the game looks. Um, the uniforms you get assigned show up here. For some reason, my uniforms for the Brooklyn Dodgers don't show up. It would be right here. I got to figure out why that picture hasn't stuck. Um, and I've got the photos on the players in the field. Now, if you want to bump any of these up when you're playing, you can go into display in your park layout. And one quick way to do it is you could say your playing field photo, no change. Let's make them a little larger. So we'll bump it up a little bit. And this main picture over here, let's bump that up one. Hit save, and you'll see now these pictures got larger, and the ones on the field got a little larger themselves. I'm not a big fan of having huge cards out here on the field. I kind of like them to be a little smaller, and I kind of like these photos this size right here. And I'm playing in a three-quarter window. I tend to play probably 90% of the time in this three-quarter window because everything I need is here, right? I've got an outcome box on that can kind of give me an idea, you know, this is a closed game engine, but this kind of gives you a little idea as to the matchup. Because so we've got Erskine down here, and it's showing us his lefty and righty, who, you know, he's given up 244 average to lefties, 210 to righties. And then the batter, you can kind of see what their average is versus lefty and righty. And this outcome box takes into account these two people, the era they came from, the year you're playing here in the park, and gives you kind of an idea here of, what you could expect. You can always turn that outcome box off. That would be under rules. A lot of times people are, how do I get to that, right? You go under rules, and I think it's under general. Miscellaneous. Under miscellaneous, you can see display outcome box. I could take that off. Okay. 
I'm just going to leave it on, right? I also am choosing to, to show the stealing success and base runner success. You could, if you don't want to see that, you can shut them off right here. If you want to be offered chances to make decisions on whether runners should go or you should throw, you can always make that, or you can select. A lot of times I have it right here. If it's 30% or higher, let me have an option. If it's not, I'm probably not going to go for it, right? Um, so let's see what it's like, right? I'm pitching. A fly ball out to right field. Ferrillo's got the catch, all right? Great play. So you can see I'm getting all of the uh, description and the text right here in the middle box. I got my batter and pitcher information up here. I got an outcome box. I got my scoreboard with all my nice window dressing, a little bit of sun showing me the, uh, I can click on that and it's telling me the temperature, 15 mile an hour wind out to right center. Got my, uh, my player photos here. The other nice thing I love about playing this game is if I want to look at the player's card from here, say it's Gil Hodges. It's not up yet, but I want to see about him. I can double click on his name. That'll pull his card up. Um, just really easy to navigate this screen. Tons of information. And on this card, you know, I can see his real line. Some great info down here on his average, you know, based on his era and all that. Anything above 100 um, is, is better than average, right? His on-base uh, slugging percentage, 137. So you can see information. As you play games and save them, the game will track all the replay stats so that you can compare that. So really fun. Um, same thing with history, you know, kind of show some of the past seasons that he's been in. Um, got a manager here where you can specifically say what you want to do with a batter. Hey, never, you know, never pull him for a pinch runner, never pull him for a pinch hitter, you know, pull for a lane inning sub. Tons of um, managerial uh, input that you can you can go through here to really kind of tweak how these people play uh, versus team fielding. Anyway, good stuff here. You can see his ratings over here. Some of these are subjective, meaning they are based off of his stats and don't come into play. I know some of these are just for informational purposes. Um, hit and run is one that does come into play. The bunt hit and sacrifice and the base running and this, but power uh, is it just takes a look at his line versus lefties and righties to give you a quick indicator that, hey, when it comes to power, you can't get better than that. He's as powerful as you can get with his extra base hits against a righty and a nine against lefties, which actually is a little bit more powerful against the same handed uh, pitcher, which doesn't happen too often. A couple more. We've got rows here. Grounding out. You see Robinson, I've got rated a 10 for this season and Hodges a 10. Um, you'll notice in my five-year runs, I spent a lot of time doing the rating. People will ask, what, how do you do your ratings? I, I use several resources, right? There's several other games I own. There's um, uh, Diamond Mind um, Online, uh, Simnasium, uh, Fangraphs, um, a bunch of other baseball reference. Um, uh, I have many uh, action PC. So what I'll typically do is there are probably be about seven different sources that I'll have to figure out what I'm going to rate them for range. And this range comes into play as to how good they are at getting the balls, meaning they're going to reduce uh, the player at the plate's average a little bit the more they're above, you know, average, you know, being a seven, an eight, or a nine. Um, I spend a ton of time trying to research that to try to pinpoint that. Um, so you may see some similarities, but a lot of these are different than, may differ from actions or from um, a similar set like the history collection, which I think is wonderful. If anybody owns action and you don't own, Action PC's history collection that has every player um, based on a certain peak or a slice of their career. That, that's the single best um, file to buy, in my opinion. It's wonderful. So we got two outs here. Do a little playing here along with talking about features of the game. So we got uh, three up, three down there. And again, we're looking at this Ebbets field, one of the many things I've downloaded that you can get off the community. Um, used to have a site, PC Ballparks. Over the years, I've just acquired a folder 
um, full of uh, different ballparks, and I'm always trying to find new ones. But if I looked at this and said, you know, I'm kind of tired of this view, um, this is where I'd go under display, hit that park layout, and, oh, I've already forgot where I'm going. I'm going to go to Options, Preferences, and then I'll go up here to uh, Game Display. Oh, let me find it. A park image. There it is. They got their own, tab, their own tab, park image. And I can see that I've been using this one. Now let's go try this one. Select that one, hit play, and you'll see it'll adjust over to this version of Ebbets Field. So I can try that. A little different look. If I wanted another one, which else? Other one I got here. A little bit different look here. Anyway, if you spend the time to go through your park data, figure out what photos you want to assign to it. I like the option that you can have three. You can have a night specific one. And I also love that in the game, I can come here and pick the one that I really want to use, the one that I like the best. So I'm going to go back to this first one. Right here. The other thing you can do here is if you realize, hey, one of my markers is off. Here, you can just go to Park Layout, and you can move the markers around. So you can I can take first base and move it here, over here. But sometimes, maybe you've got a marker off, and you want to have it right at a certain location. Or you realize, hey, I, you know, I got a little bit more room here for foul ground. I could drop it over here, or whatever it might be, or one of your fences off. You can change it right here while you're playing the game. This is something that was added in recent years. It wasn't there, you know, 10 plus years ago. So, it's a great feature when you're playing. See if we can get any hits out there. The one thing I am going to have to work on here is uh, watching uh, Beatles and them is uh, getting into some play-by-play. -play. So here we've got a pop-up box coming up, right? Snyder's doubled off the wall in center. It's asking me if I want to go for a triple. i got a 59% chance, and I'm going to say, hey, let's do it. Let's get aggressive. Oh, and guess what? Just... Like you'd think, Pinson throws him out. So, so much for that idea, right? So now I'm back to pitching. But you can see a um, little bit of the game action. You can slow that down. Again, I like the um, the video um, to be a little bit fast. But you can make it real fast, or you can really slow it down if you want. Maybe I'll probably put it right about there. Got a fly ball out to right. Looks like it's going to be an easy out for Ferrillo. And it is. The other thing I wanted to highlight, and some people may not know this, how easy zooming is. So let's say you're doing a season replay, and I've done this sometimes to speed up, and I'm in a game, and I'm like, okay, maybe you know, I'm ahead by five, or I'm down by six. It's the third or fourth inning. I say, you know, let me just move this along a little bit. So if you want to do that, you go up under quick, and you have a lot of different things that you can do here under quick. So one thing I can do is zoom options. So I can zoom to when these situations occur, right? To when it gets within a one, there's a pitching change, some significant event here. Or I can just pick when I want to zoom. I can zoom right to the inning or to a certain person's at bat. So, for example, we're in the second inning here. Let me just, let's zoom to the seventh. So I'll zoom to the seventh. As soon as you select that, you just, it'll tell you your zoom's complete. And here we go. Now the computer sim that for us and taking us right up here. And you can see I'm behind by one in the seventh. So now I'm focused, right? Now I've got something to keep me engaged. But this is a great option um, for people that are simming uh, long seasons and stuff. And you want to play part of it, but maybe you don't want to play every out. Really great feature um, on the game. So I get, still got Erskine in the game going here. Got a slow bounder here. Erskine covers. So we got an out. So take a look here. You can see the pitch count. 117 for Erskine. When you hold this over, an estimated pitch count is about, based on his real stats, it's about 150. So if we click on Erskine, we'll see why over here. 
pull his card up. You take a look at his pitching. So, yeah, he started 30 games, and he completed um, about 40-plus percent, right? He completed 13 of them. So he can go deep. When they get tired over their estimated pitch count, this thing will, will pop up in red. But it's one of those where you just don't know when you should pull them, so keeping an eye on them. Mm, giving up another hit here. So let's see what we got. Let's see if we can get a double play. Now I'm getting worried. Double plays in order. I got Johnson up. 172 is what the outcome box is showing me. I think I'll take my chances and pitch to him. Ah, get a good strikeout. Got Tommy Harper up. Erskine's tough. Uh-oh, we've got Campanella going to the mound. Don't want to get the signs mixed up. Now I got a decision. Down one. Not a strong hitter up. Let's see if we can get Bear down and get this out. Got a ground ball. Cox at third. Takes the easy one at second. Gets me out of that inning. So... Here we go, bottom of the eight. Let's see if I can uh, do some damage. They've got their starting pitcher, Joey J, still in. Farilla looks like he's and Look at that. Just what I ordered up. Perfect timing. It's like we got a tie ball game. Um, let's see if I can pull this win out, right? A couple other things I was going to talk about while we're playing the game in here. The other one was the preference that I have. So when I go under preference, under game display, I like this three-quarter screen layout. But it's not for everyone, right? Um, if we change this to full screen, you get to see a much more field view, right? And you'll notice that my player photos are really large now. So a lot of times when I go to here, I'm going to play full screen. We'll do this for a while. I'll go back to park layout and say, you know what? Don't change them. I had them bumped up. Let's take them back to no, no change. And that'll reduce the size down a little bit. Then you'll see I've got a little bit smaller box right here for my play-by-play. -play. I still get my outcome box, pitcher information. Um, to me, sometimes on the different ballparks will determine whether I'm playing full screen or three-quarters. Some of them just don't set up for the image to be full screen and still give me a place where I can have all of these different boxes. And you can move those around. Uh, I'm not going to get too crazy into that, but you can go you can go around here and start moving the game display, start moving the team lineups. Uh, if you don't want to show something, you want to show something. Um, play call box wide. Do, you want, do I make it tall? Like I can come over here and make it tall. Changes the format of it. Kind of like this. So let's see what we got here uh, playing full screen. Got a tie game here in the eight. Campanella strikes out. Got Shuba up. Let's see if this is a deep one. Ah, looks like Pinson's going to track this one in, which he does. Very nice. Decent outfield high. Got Tommy Harper in left. Pinson uh, in eight and right with an eight arm. And Frank Robinson over here. Sandy Amaros. Ooh, we get a walk. So we got the tying, uh, or the go ahead run at first. Let's see what we've got here. Bobby Cox up. Ground ball to Johnson at third. The computer is starting Johnson at third. Probably wouldn't be my choice if I was managing these A's, but Erskine seems fine. He's thrown 135 pitches. He's got a lefty coming up. I like to look and see. All right, I've got Pinson. I've got Pete Rose at seconds, a switch hitter. i got a lot of lefties coming up here in this lineup. Do I have any lefties to replace Erskine with? So if I click on Erskine, I'm looking at my left-handed. If I just look at the bullpen, it seems like I have no left-handed pitchers. But if you click this button that says display available starters as well, it's also going to show me people that are designated starters, right? Only one relief appearance here and six for them. But sometimes if you're going here and you're not seeing everybody, click everyone. 
Uh, yeah, I don't have much just in terms of left-handed pitchers on this 51 to 55 club, so let's stick it out and see if uh, yeah, Erskine still looks pretty good. Got that pinch pitch count up there. Pete Rose with the grounder. So here we go. See if we can get Frank Robinson out. They fly to right. Farilla looks like an easy catch. And here we go. Ah, so computer is sticking with uh, Jay. It looks like they've got estimated pitch count up to 145. So these two are used to going the distance quite a bit. Pee Wee Reese looking to get on to start this inning off, but it isn't going to happen here. We've got a young Pete Rose here, second base. Jackie Robinson. Could this be a deep one that we need? Oh, it could be. Is it going back? Oh, Harper with the catch. Got Snyder. Is this the one? Getting me excited with these long fly balls all for nothing, right? So Erskine is tiring, it's saying. So if I click on Erskine, he's getting close to that pitch count. And I think I'm going to heed that warning and go down here and maybe find me. Got some lefties to worry about, but maybe I've got a righty that's decent against lefties too. And the guy I'm going to go with right here, I'm going to go with Joe Black. This is the guy I'm feeling. Could be decent against both sides of the plate. Let's see how this relief pitcher does for me. It's like Cox has got to play on it at third. Throws it to first. Hodges with the... Ooh, what do we got? Can't get it down. We got an E5. We can always go over here and hit replay. Hit this R. You can scroll through the replay. Throws to first. High throw. Hodges leaps. Can't get it. So it looks like an error on a high throw. So we've got Lynch at second. Coleman up. Oh, boy. And just like that, my managerial career is in the pits. So... The move to bring Black in doesn't seem like it's paying off. At least I've got uh, another at-bat to try to pull this even, but now we're down two. And that error sure wasn't helpful because now we've got uh, an error and two hits. Let's see if we can get one over here. Reese to Robinson. Can they turn two? Good double play combination. They got the two. So let's get out of this inning here. See if we can get Harper. And we are out, but I'm down two now. So let's see. Computer is still going with Jay, even in an extra inning here. All right. Got one down. Carl Farrell up. Let's get out of here. Pins and tracks it down. So I'm down to my last out. They've got him in tired. It's showing red. So you see his pitch count's actually red because he's over the 145. But they're, they don't seem to be scared. He wants that complete game win. Roy Campanella up. Got my fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. Keep it alive, Roy. Keep it alive. And just like that, it's over. We take a peek here at one thing I love to again. I you know I just enjoy the uh, logos on here, the photographs. Um, uh, it just dresses up even the box score, right? Uh, you can select this to have a normal box score that just looks like a text format, but this is really a nice interactive box score. Um, you can scroll down the entire thing here, um, or you can go to different sections, right? We can just look at batting the players of the game for each team will be up here based on their performance. And you can kind of see why, you know, Lynch is up there. He was two for five. You got Gordy Coleman knocked in three runs. Um, Frank Robinson. 
And over here, you got Billy Cox and Ferrillo. You can take a look at the pitching. What's interesting here is this stuff category. If you guys are new to action. Um, it's really neat. So Jay was showing his estimated pitch count at one, I think it was 140, 150. But in actuality, it will fluctuate just to provide some variance. It was actually 152. You can shut that off if you don't ever want to see this. I like seeing it once the game's over. Erskine, I got him up to 150 pitches, and he was at 147 with his, his pitch count. Um, stuff, you'll get ratings on here. So this is indicating that J, that plus, is that the variant here was to give him a little bit of extra boost, right? He had a little extra stuff going at, and Erskine had a little less in the game. Miscellaneous. You can see two errors here, both on my team. He had five doubles, home runs. It's nice now that home runs will tell you what inning, who was on, and it's also giving you the distance in feet it's tracking. Um, great plays and poor plays. So you'll see that tracked uh, in the stats for the players throughout the season too, right? And the people that have the higher um, – you know, fielding numbers and fielding ratings are going to have, you know, higher great plays and things like that. And ones with the lower ones, probably going to have poor. We got Darren Johnson, who is not a very good fielding third baseman. Cincinnati wanted his bat in the lineup, I guess. But you can see he had two poor plays um, uh, during the game. Um, outfield assist, Pinson, remember, he gunned down uh, Duke Snyder. Um, and no MVP. And this is what you'll notice. I played an exhibition game. There won't be an MVP selected. However, if you're playing a league game or, or uh, any other scheduled game, they'll always have a, an MVP declared. And then the game will track that as well. You want to look at a typical score sheet, right? Like if you were scoring this, you can see the score sheet um, for both teams. Um, one of my favorite features right here is this. It is the replay. So you, it, great if you're doing a write-up for a league um, or great just to kind of look back and just kind of get a story of what took place during the game. So this gives you just a great storyline of the scoring plays and significant events, right? And then afterwards, it's calling out some of the players that had big games, right? Like Gordy Coleman, two for three with that home run, three RBIs. But this is just a nice way to look at the game afterwards i had quite a few highlights in this game right so you can you can scroll down here and, and see um play by play you can also go back and examine the play by play each result and see what happened right uh it also give you the count it took place on right so you're seeing balls and strikes i was playing in pitch mode or at bat mode where you hit the button and it will resolve the at bat you can also at any time play pitch by pitch, take a little bit longer, or you can set it up and you can rotate back and forth. If you get a runner on and you want to move over to from at bat mode to pitch by pitch, you can do that throughout the game. Another great, great feature. Um, yeah, so this is kind of a combo, right? I'll call it a combo. It's introduction into my five-year franchise file and a little intro into the game itself. Because what I found is um, a couple people um, have reached out that have just recently purchased action. Um, I know one guy, D. Scott Howard, who was on Beatles Eternally uh, site, and we were chatting, uh, recently bought the game. And I know he's got this file and is using it. So it's, to me, it's always nice to be able to um, to kind of understand all of the elements of the game, but it's difficult because again, this game is so detailed. Um, we just go through the top here and see all the things you can do. You've got organization up here for schedules, um, the era data, league tools, tons of things you can do here. You create all-star teams, right? Which is great to do if you're you know, halfway through a season, you can just say create all-star teams and it will look at the stats and the voting and all that good stuff and, and uh, put those together. Um, I won't even bother to go into it here, but what I may do is if this is informative for people is do some specialized kind of tutorials on the game uh, where we get into different things like actually drafting, maybe creating a league, 
um, messing with some park data or layouts. Um, one thing I haven't done in years is actually play a game head to head. And I'm dying to get back into that. Um, Mark Weiss, who is Simmark on the action forums, runs a um, King of Diamonds. I don't know if that's still active, but I, I played a few years with them, you know, 10 plus years ago. And it's a great league where they do an abbreviated, you know, 40 to 50 game season and all the games are head to head. And, it, and it's always a theme, you know, like teams that finished uh, 500 or teams that, you know, won their, uh, had the best record in the league, but didn't win the World Series. You name it. They've done different themes with that. And we had a blast playing head to head. So I'd um, love to get back into some of that. Um, again, we saw some of the game preferences, play by play. You can go into play by play here and add to it. You can look at all the play by play descriptions and you can, you know, break down, you know, how you want it to be used. You can add play by play. You can even create a file and save it and have a different play by play file. So if you want to have a specialized one with your own color, a different language for different grounders and hits and all that stuff. I've never gone in here to mess with it, but hey, if that interests you, you've got the ability. Again, that's why I love this game because they give you the ability to go in and edit anything you want yourself. Um, let me show you a little bit about the editing. Let's go back to my blank test league. A lot of times people say, man, how do you create these teams? Well, here's a team we've created. We imported two, right? So we've got the 1924 Detroit Tigers here. And this will be a good example. If I wanted to use these players and I wanted to change something or edit their stats, I would go right up here to edit. And I could edit their general information, which is their name, how they bat. And then these are some of their um, ratings for you know how well they hit and run and, and so on. I could also go in here and say, hey, I want to edit their batting. I want to edit real. And this you can see, this is where you would see all of their batting information that's used for that season. And this is where I would go in here and just say, hey, you know what I'm going to do? Let me clear this spreadsheet. Are you sure? Yep. Boom. Now it's empty. So if I exit out, I have no, I have no batting information. It's all gone. And then if I wanted to go in. I go in and edit batting. I could add my own lines in here. I'll just make something up to kind of see 400, 400 at bats. I got to figure out how to tab this, right? Um, 100 hits. Well, stolen bases, six caught stealing, grounded into 10 double plays. Boom. So now what I've done is I've entered that data. Now you'll see it. So if we clicked on Johnny Bassler, if I double clicked on him, you can see I've just added that information in right there. What's cool about this is then if I go to edit adding versus what I do to get the splits, I just edit one. If you do one, the other one will be there, right? So if it's got total, you can edit the left. You can see right here, the game automatically does an estimated. So if you don't put in specific split data, it's already, when you've put in this, estimated what, based on historical averages, a typical lefty would be. What's he batting? Bassler's a lefty, so it would be lefty on lefty numbers is what it'd be doing right here. Now. If I come here and I want to add it, which I do, I want to add my own data that I've compiled of real splits. I just go to tools and I just say, clear spreadsheet. Are you wanting, sure? Yeah, I clear it and now I put on my own bat. So let's say he only batted 50 times against uh, people. He had nine hits, one double, one triple, one homer, you know, three RBIs, two walks, five strikeouts. You don't even have to put zero. So if it's zero, you can type zero or leave it blank. It's the same, right? Now I hit save. Now when I go to Johnny Bassler, you can see I, it's got the stats that I put in for him. And now it has the specific splits I put in for him. But if you don't put any, it creates default ones for you. Same is true with pitching. So just a little information 
uh, for anybody that's in their home brewing or creating. This is how I go about it. I do a lot of the manual entry into these fields to create them. There is an import sheet, an Excel sheet you can you can kind of use to then import. I have never even tried it because I have my, you notice here, like if I go to edit batting, when you look at what it asks for, games at bats and all this stuff, if I pull up one of my batting lines here, like for this, you'll notice I have it right here. I have it set up in the exact same order and the same thing for splits that this calls for. So I'm a creature of habit. I go in here and I just add them in manually. Easy for me. And it takes time, right? I do that, then I do the left. Then when I do it, I'm going to edit fielding, right? So if I'm creating a disk and I come here, they've already got all of their data they have here. We can cycle through all the positions. But they got a great tool here. I can clear just this spreadsheet that is showing right fielders, or I can clear everything. So I'm going to clear everything clear everything and now when you click on anything nobody has any fielding information boom so now when you look over here no fielding ratings so they're all listed as pinch hitters or in this case they're listed as pitchers another tip if you have pitchers that are on the column here and they're also showing as batters over here it's probably because they might have played some field positions or were used as a pinch hitter. if you don't want these people showing up as both batters and pitchers you just right click on them and modify. And when you modify the player down here, you just, I'm just going to say, I just want them to display only with the pictures. I don't want to see them on my batter screen. And then they go away. Rip Collins, same thing. Modify, not with batters, keep pictures selected. And now, oh, Will Stoner, great name, by the way. Um, show them with the pictures. So now when I scroll through here, these are all pinch hitters because they're batters. All my pictures are over there. Um, yeah, so now I can edit fielding. So for Bassler, you know, he was a catcher. So I can go over here to catch and say, okay, he's he caught 50 games. Uh, he had 300 put out, you know, 24 assists, one error, two double plays. That's a triple play. I'm going to put that down. Say he's a six range, six arm, and he had five pass balls. Save it. Boom. Now he's showing up over here. That's a six, and if I click on Johnny Bassler, I hit fielding. Now he's got fielding data showing his catcher. It'll automatically assign a pass ball rate at the rate he gives up pass balls based on how many pass balls he had and it, with those put outs. And, and you can see. You can see he's a catcher. This is his fielding percentage. But if I play him out of range, Let's say I, I had an emergency, I put him in at first base, you can see the expected fielding range drop. So this little chart here is great because it shows you what he's rated at. And if you played him out of position, the penalty that would be there, that fielding percentage just drops quite a bit. Anyway, a little bit of stuff I was going to share tonight on the file. Also talk to you a little bit about, you know, how I've, some of the stuff I've done to create this, some of the window dressing, a few features um, on the game. And happy to do more if um, there's any interest or anybody has, leave some comments on this video and see if there's anything you'd like to look at. Um, some other fun window dressing I did, if you notice on my team files down here where the action logo is, I have league files. So I went and found logos for the National League. Let me see if I can remember where we set those up. I think it's under rules. So if we go under... Rules, right in front of me. So under rules, info, right here. I can you know, pick a logo. I, I just threw the league logo in here, but this is where you could get them to show up here. If you had a league you were doing and wanted to have your own creative logo or whatever, this is where you'd put it here. Um, but this also tells you, like, how do you, you want to display wild card standings? Do you want to apply the records to an all-time book? Because there's an encyclopedia thing that, um, that saves that. You've got a salary value. Um, you can change it from the DK Sports value, which is based off of their, their ratings and their, their stats. Or if you're running a league running real values, you can change it and change it to real salary and input your own salaries to track if you're running a league. Um, you can choose how you want to display stuff. 
quick setup is great here. If you've got an existing 1958 season, for example, and you want to do it as played, it has as played lineup. You can hit as played and each game that pops up, that starting lineup for those games will be will be there. Um, you can also just choose transactions where you have call ups and, and send downs and injuries and things. Um, or you just want to use major transactions, none. And then this is one I haven't done enough experimenting with, but I, I always plan to alternate reality mode, which it varies a little bit. So it's just for a little bit of spice with a, with a replay, right? So even with a project like this, if I was in a league with these five-year files, it might be fun to do alternate reality because if you got a guy that's at 20 homers and 280, maybe this adjusted him to be like a 15 homer guy, 270. Um, but you don't know that, right? So um, adds a little more mystery into the managerial selections throughout the league. Or it might bump him up from a you know 15 and you know a 300 batter and 15 homers to maybe a 320 hitter with 20. So who you know a lot of variation can happen with that. Not drastic. It's not going to you know cut him in half or anything. But I know when I've read the manual and there's an explanation here that seems like it might be interesting. Um, to try out, but I just haven't dug deep into that. I honestly don't get as much of time to play because I'm so focused on building these files and the window dressing. So what I do each day, if I've got time to build a team or work on it, I always tell myself, okay, I'm, I'm starting to stop and make sure I play a game. Or I'll run some simulations with teams I've just finished to see if there's any anomalies, or maybe I made a um, an input error on a stat and all, all of a sudden I can see it and correct it. Um, but I'm starting to make sure I at least play a few games a day because I enjoy playing the game. It's a blast. Um, roster limits, right? I've got this league set to no limit because I'm just putting the, the, the players that qualify. But if you run in a league, you can set it to whatever you want. All the way up to, you know, 45. Um, using transaction dates, daily lineups, injuries. You can set links. You can, you know, durability. Um, can play with that. I mean, just so many different things you can do here um, with the game. And I'm just scratching the surface, really. There's so many. And, and trust me, I am not the guy that knows the most about playing this. I, I get, I know a good deal. I've had a lot of years, but every time uh, a new version comes out, there's always some feature that, you know, I'm busy doing what I typically do, which is build some teams, play. I may not even dig in. And then a few versions go by and I'm like, wow this is cool. When did this get here? And sometimes it's already been there for a while. And then there's more new enhancements. So um, just a big proponent of the game due to the flexibility, the accuracy, all that good stuff. So uh, if you want a quick sim, a lot of times I'll, I'll grab a team here and maybe do a quick, a quick sim just to kind of check it out. Um, maybe if Beatles eternally gets a, gets to watch this, he's a big Pittsburgh guy. So let me grab uh one of these Pittsburgh teams. Uh, let's see. Let's grab this Wagner team here. 0509. And let's see what we got. An early game here, maybe. Let's take how about Brooklyn 16 to 20. Playing an exposition park here in Pittsburgh. We can play. If you want a quick sim, you don't have time, you just say, hey, I want to wonder what would happen. Set it to computer. The computer will pick the lineups, play it, boom, it'll be instant. Let's see what we've got. Game's over. Oh, a trouncing, 11 to 1. 05 to 09, Pittsburgh sure stuck it to Brooklyn. So then you can take a look here at the batting. I don't have any pictures. You can see this is what displays it, but I don't have any pictures created yet for these early, uh, many of these early teams. Um, yeah, three RBIs here from Neil. And look at the pitching right here. Vic Willis with the big win, right? A little recap, a lot of offense. But anyway, always fun. You can always sim games, check them out. Um, I do that a lot sometimes when I'll create teams just to run some quick sims with them and maybe throw some different pitchers in there and just see how they turn out.
Another great feature here is the database. So I could go here and take a look at just players on teams. I could search at free agents. I don't have any free agents, but you know, if, I, if there were free agents out here, I can display, you know, their position, age, rating values. It's taken a while. I've got quite a few players on this, this so I'm seeing the wheel spin. I'll give it a minute. Great way for examining your database of players here. Uh, Beatles Eternally had a great suggestion, and I hadn't necessarily thought about it, but he said, hey, this would be a fun file, not just because they're five-year teams and you could play a tournament and different things. He says, but because of the pool of players here. He said, you can look at all this pool of players and then maybe narrow that down and do a draft league. So you can see we've got Hank Aaron on here twice. Looks like I haven't put a team abbreviation, which I'll go fix right now. For the um, Some of these don't have a team abbreviation to mean I haven't gone to that team and, and put it in there yet. But, you know, I've got Hank Aaron on an Atlanta team in the late 50s or in the 69 to 73. And then I've got a late 50s Milwaukee Braves team for him. Um, who else we got on here? But we could take a look at one of you all teams, all batters, real stats. And let's say minimum batting. Let's say 300 plate appearances. There's a bunch of players on here. And... And it will find all of them right here. So let's see. I can put their rating, their value, the year on here. It'll add that to the list. Um, let's see what else we can do on this. So we can list all the now you're seeing their rating here, right? Value. If I put value on here, you'll see what DKS is salary value. And that's all based on the ratings. I think uh, Barry Bonds is huge because he's on that the early 2000s. Um, so let's take a look at this. Yeah, if I psych, yeah, look at the value here. Barry Bonds, if I click on him, the pictures for showing his uh, for the Pirates. I don't have a giant picture yet for him, but. That line right here, he's batting 348. He's got 59 home runs. His OPS is 1.379. Um, his fielding is you know, still decent. That's just a huge rating right here. Um, Hornsby, look at this. He's got a 9.9 where he's getting 17.8 million. This Hornsby for St. Louis, I think it's just 20. Yeah, 1924 is where he's coming from right here. Um, he's on the 21 to 25 Cardinals. Six at second, seven double play pivot, but his, his batting line is uh, 413 average, 32 homers, 42 doubles, 1.22 OPS. So, look at 225 is OPS pluses. It's just that's a great, that's a fun team just because he's on it right there. But you, you can go through here and search players um, in the database. Another cool feature if you're looking for a player on here easily, um, you can go under organize and hit player search. It's great. And then I can just say Maze and hit return. Boom. It's given me all my Willie Mays. So it's telling me I've got Willie Mays on this file four times. He's on the um, 62 to 66 Giants. He's on a later Giant team, an earlier New York Giant team, and then a Met team. I think Ruth's on a couple too. Let's take Ruth. Look at Ruth. Oh, I'm looking at Dumb me. I've got the NL up here. I'm trying to think who else in the NL might be. Take a look at Johnny Bench. It's got to be on a few. So he's on a 68 to 72 version I have. He's on the 72 to 76 bed rib machine. Then I did a 77 to 81, uh, kind of a late 70s uh, team. So Johnny Bench is on all of those. So you can look at his different cards here. During the big, the 72 to 76 run, you can kind of see his run right here. I mean, 
He's the best catcher of his era. Maybe one of the best ever, for sure. Um, a little bit later in his career, 77. Yeah, his arm's down to an eight, whereas I got his feeling, fielding still a nine. But this is a great feature, too. If you've got a whole thing, you're like, man, where's this player at? You just type in the last name, and it's great. Even if you only know uh, part of it, HRRR, and it'll it'll pull up anybody that has starts with those three. So it's really a intuitive and very easy to work player search. I use this quite a bit. Uh, what other good features do we have here we can highlight? Historical era data. This is great for reference, but be very careful. It's going to warn you if you go in here. But this lets you know the baseline for each year. So when I go in here, you, let's say 2021 season, you can see this was the batting average per 1,000, you know, how many strikeouts there were. And this is what allows the game to figure out the baseline. Or the, I call it the universe that the player came from, the year, the park, and their numbers. And then figure out how to adjust that based on the year and the park that they're, that they're now playing. But this is a good thing for reference. You can go back here into the 1925 here, start looking at how many in the National League, the average, how it goes up, right? 282, 291, 279. Then we get right up here, I think, in 1930, league average, 303. So if you've got a, you know, 300 batter in um, 1930, they're just a hair under average or right at average. Whereas a 300 batter in, let's say, 1977, yeah, they're going to be about 40 points over the average. So real big difference when you're looking at what era they come from and how they perform. Really neat. Um, but be very careful if you go in here, because if you change any of this data and then save it, then now you've gotten rid of that historical uh, data. So. Oh, uh, another fun thing here. Now I got to find where it's at. I think it's under reports. Wow. League reports here. We can go top player salaries. Interesting to see, right? I think we saw on there. These are the top player salaries, which are showing you some of the best players on this project file I have here. Honus Wagner's got two of them up there because he's on a 1901 to 05 Pittsburgh team and an 05 to 09 one. Um, this is one way to look at it. Another thing under reports is you can go to league and take a look at team salaries, see which teams. This is all based on their ratings in here and their stats. So you can see the highest team salaries at St. Louis, 42 to 46 team. Lots of good pitching on that Cincy team as well. So many reports and things you can do in here to look at stuff. League standings, all stars. Team roster analysis. This is a good one, too. This is great to figure out. And some of these teams, if you notice, it'll it's telling me for all the teams I have in here how many how many players and how many total starting uh, how many games I have at that position. So it's a great way to look to see if you've got games covered, right? So right here for Brooklyn, uh, 99, 1899 to 03, I can see, hey, I'm kind of low here, but I still think I've got enough for how many games they had in real life, right? Five players total played right field, and the games add up to 150. So this is a great view. You can see the payroll, the average um, salary per player. Just a great view to see if you have all of your uh, field, uh, fielding positions covered. You can also do that on the team here. You just go into reports, hit roster analysis. So this will let me know right here that, hey, I'm pretty good. Where well, they have 154 game season, a little light in right field, but I got enough players here to cover that 159 games in right field. And then I can click here and see there the four of them are. Ross Young's, I think he's the main right fielder. We can click on him. See, yep. He's got a 10 arm, a heck of an arm back then, seven right field, and he's got 142 games played there. So 
some other little navigation tips to get you information in this great game. And let me see if there's one other, there was one other one I was going to, oh, use player created spreadsheet. That's where you could uh, have your own player created spreadsheet in that format and, and format and import it. I've never even messed with that. Maybe I'll take that on as a, uh, that's an assignment, but um, managers, you could import managers if you had manager files that are sitting there. So if you're in a league and you, you can go in here and create a manager for your team, um, say in Cincy over here, I can go into my manager file and hit manager preferences here. And I could set up a whole preference about what I want to do in managing this. I could export that, send it off to somebody running the league. They load all those in and then my manager profile um, is active. So I could have a bunch of those set ready to go based on who I was going to be playing or what, you know, what teams or whoever I was facing. And then I could uh, send that off to whoever was running the league and uh, they could easily import that. So that's what the manager's file files do. Um, and I'm trying to remember, there's one thing here I was looking at. Ah, right here, players. What if, if you go to players reports, what if, now let me see if I can remember how to use this. This is great if you say, let's do teams, and if you batters, let's say, let's take a look at Hornsby up here. See, we got Hornsby, St. Louis, he's batting 413 up here. I'm going to take the league he's in, at least 300 at bats. And I'm going to say, say if it was, say it's 2021 National League in a neutral park. I'll refresh. So, go down here and find Hornsby. You can see here, it's showing right here what his real line is. This is the line I've got in for him. But if you moved him into a uh, into the future park, a neutral park in 2021, now let's actually move him to Bush. Bush Stadium 3. Now I'm losing him. Where is he at? Hornsby, Hornsby, Hornsby. Right here. Boom. Roger Hornsby. Look at this. It's basically saying because the era he was in and hitting these home runs, and if you moved him into the current days, you could expect this. Look at the the doubles stay the same, triples greatly reduce, and the home runs go crazy because of the era change. Right? A little bit more walks compared to what he was enduring back then, a lot more strikeouts. So this is this what if is a blast to go in here and take a look at players to see if you move them. Same thing if we went back, if I took a file here, some more modern players. Let's take uh, 2000, 2009 teams and just a neutral park and say, you know what, let's take 2009 players and let's take them back to 1908. Refresh it. So we can look here, you know, Bill Buckner with the Dodgers right here, six home runs, uh, 290 average. If we take him back to 1908, it's going to take him down to one home run and a 274 average. Um, we, if we move him into a, a specific park, like let's put him into uh, the Baker Bowl. Let's refresh it. 
So now Bill Buckner, it'll tell you what, what's going on in the Baker Bowl now. So it's just a cool tool to take what they really did is change it up, have the game look at what park are they going to, what what league, what year, and you can kind of see the what if. How do the park factors and the change in universe that they come from impact um, how their performance would be? So another fun tool. You get, you get lost in here for hours. I've done that before. Um, things you can export, right? Your games, zip files. Baseball manuals right there. I strongly encourage anybody to um, read through it. I mean, it, it's a great manual. I mean, it doesn't, it covers everything in here as a feature, but I mean, you've, there's no replacement for getting in here and just digging around. So feel free to get in here and dig. Uh, and post any comments if you've got any questions on this or like to see me cover anything else in the future. I can tell you um, I'm going to be putting, I'm trying to figure out where my, got my master list of uh, teams here, my five-year list, some things I'm checking and doing, but I've got yeah, 78 AL teams now and 79 NL teams. And I've got a few more down here that I've got triggered that I'm going to be uh, creating. In fact, the next one I'm working on right now are these 2002 to 06 Marlins. I've got those pretty well started. So that's probably going to be the next team I get added here in the coming days. Um, but I've got a few more down here that I've got on my radar that people have suggested. And this is just kind of a checklist I, I look at with notes on it that I need to go back and check and make sure I've got things right. And, and I've double checked the data and I've got the right fields and photos that I'm getting put together. But it's a project to love. I enjoy doing this thing, but it's taken a lot of time, but I've been able to crank a lot of teams out. So anybody out there that's joined these five-year franchise files, I've got them on the action uh, forum. So I believe I've got that pulled up right here. So if you go into uh, action PC forum, which you get to right from the game site, you know, I just, you can go to uh, actions home homepage and hopefully everybody got something on the, uh, on the sale recently. The Christmas sale was great. And when you go to the main page here, Action PC Forum, just click on there. It'll take you into the forum. I think I'm logged in here. I'm Steve267 on the forum. Well, the remote it's already sees me logged in. But I'm just going to be dropping the folders here. I posted this earlier. Um, where I've put the um, most updated files. Probably at the end of this coming week, I'll send some out to the Action Community site that has um, a lot of the files on it once I get some things double-checked, but I hope to get them up there by the end of next week. But I will be posting every day or so on the Action Forum some updates as I add teams. And some people are giving me some great feedback um, looking at some of the the data and calling out some uh, data errors, some input errors, because, yeah, I'm, I'm fat fingering things, right? It's just one guy sitting in here um, putting the stuff in. But uh, I've enjoyed working on this, but just a little bit insight into, um, into the files and um, let me know your thoughts. Thanks.